Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and where did the month of June go? So June was a really crazy month for me. I moved to New York and by the way this chair is new as well. Uh, my grandparents are also moving and I sort of inherited this chair which is a great reading chair it's cozy but not too cozy so I fall asleep so I'm very excited with it and I was also given from my parents they were like we'll throw this in for you because the chair is kind of firm the curl up with a book kitty pillow so even though I don't have a cat here it's like I do not really. But yes, this month was pretty crazy. I moved to New York. I visited one of my best friends in LA. And while I was there, I actually got to meet up with Laura from Narco Catcher, which is super exciting. I'll show you guys a picture of us. I also went to a wedding in Portland, Oregon. I had a beach vacation. So that was a lot, a lot of traveling and everything, but I probably won't be traveling again for a year or so. Despite that, I did manage to read six and a half books, but I formed what I think will be some pretty unpopular opinions on two very highly acclaimed books. So this should be an interesting wrap up for you guys. So I started out this month strong by finishing The Vegetarian by Han Kang. This is one of those very popular books that I didn't think I was interested in reading until I saw it at the library and thought I'd give it a try. It's about a woman named Young Hee who, after experiencing violent and haunting dreams, decides to give up eating meat and become a vegetarian and live a more subversive plant-like existence. The book is told in parts from the point of view of Young Hee's misogynistic husband, her brother-in-law and sister. But interestingly enough, we only hear Young He's perspective as filtered through other characters. This book deals with issues of mental illness, eating disorders, feminism, and abuse. Now, with a description like that, it sounds like the kind of book I would actually really enjoy, but the truth is I didn't love it, and I know that that is not the most popular opinion of it. I thought it was actually rather underwhelming, which is odd considering the heavy themes and subject matter of the book. I didn't feel a connection with or even truly understand the main character, Young Hee, probably because the characters who presented her story didn't really understand her either. I simply put the book down feeling that I didn't glean anything from it that I couldn't grasp from all the booktubers who had talked about it before me. For me, listening to Jen Campbell talk about the book had the same impact as reading it for myself, which frankly was quite disappointing. Perhaps it was simply too hyped for me to enjoy it. I don't really know. Clearly though, I am in the minority with my opinions as it has a solid four star rating on Goodreads and was the winner of the Man Booker Prize in 2016. So if you want to read it, please don't let me dissuade you from doing so. I then picked up my very first Discworld book, Going Postal by Terry Pratchett. After reading Good Omens, I wanted to try some of Terry Pratchett's work, and after extensive research, I decided that Going Postal was as good a place to start as any. The book, set in the universe of Discworld, focuses on the con artist and criminal, Moist von Lipwig. In the first chapter, he is hung for his crime. Believed to be dead, he is given a second chance at life as a government employee, more specifically postmaster of Ankhamor Pork. He discovers that the job might be more difficult than expected, though, as the post office is in shambles and littered with undelivered mail that he swears is talking to him. Is Moist up to the task of restoring the post office to its former glory? This book is a delightful satire, brimming with witty writing. It's such an enjoyable and quirky read, and I hope to read more Discworld books soon. So actually, if you have any suggestions of what to read next in the Discworld series, please let me know. I was thinking of starting with The Color of Magic to better understand the world that all these stories take place in, 
And yeah, maybe that's a good place to start. Maybe it isn't. Let me know. It would be much appreciated. But I just want to share a few delightful snippets of this book with you because I think it's so refreshing to encounter a true satire that's simultaneously light and enjoyable, but also really seriously critiques society. Words have power, you understand? It is the nature of our universe. Our library itself distorts time and space on quite a grand scale. Well, when the post office started accumulating letters, it was storing words. In fact, what was being created was what we call a javisa, a tomb of living words. Another one. People were strange like that. Steal five dollars and you were a petty thief. Steal thousands of dollars and you were either a government or a hero. And then I started The Accidental by Ali Smith as a buddy read with Katie from Books and Things. The premise of The Accidental is that a 30-something year old barefoot woman shows up unannounced at the door of the Smart family summer home. She tells nothing but lies. She stays for dinner, she worms her way into the family's life, and changes them forever. But this book isn't really about the plot. The plot is slow and that's kind of all there is to it. Mm, there's one more thing that I'm not telling you guys because I don't think you should know it going into the book. But it's a slow burning stream of consciousness type book in which Ali Smith toys with and experiments with language. Now, I know Ali Smith is a very popular author on BookTube, but I have to say that this was my first Ali Smith book, and frankly, I didn't like it. This book really made me question what is a good book? What is a good author? Maybe there's something wrong with me that I'm not enjoying all these books this month that have been widely acclaimed by pretty much everyone. The Accidental won the Whitbread Novel Award in 2005, and it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize as well. Frankly though, despite the interesting premise, I found the writing indulgent. It is as if Ali Smith took every idea she's ever had for playing with language and threw it indiscriminately at each page of this book. Is she a talented writer? I think so, yes. But I also think that part of being a writer is showing restraint and using your skills deliberately and methodically. Overall, I thought this book was inaccessible, impenetrable, dense. I think that this type of writing would just be far more successful in short story form, and I think Katie agreed as well. As a novel, it was simply overwhelming. I think Katie liked the book more than I did. I'm sure she'll discuss her opinions of the book in her own wrap-up, but I love doing buddy reads with Katie, and I feel badly that I sort of flaked out a bit on this one. I actually stopped on page 264 out of 305 for a few weeks, and I almost didn't pick it back up. So sorry, again, Katie. Um, I love doing buddy reads with you, and I hope this one didn't dissuade you from doing more with me in the future. But this book was overall a disappointment for me. The only reason I did end up picking this book back up and actually finishing it was so that I could talk about it. I feel uncomfortable critiquing an unfinished book. Do you feel that way too? Or do you think you can discuss a book that you didn't complete? I just always have this idea of what if the last few pages change the entire book for you? How can you discuss something that you didn't experience fully? But at the same time, if you read a large chunk of the book, I would argue that you have interacted with it and formed some sort of opinion. I don't know. How do you feel about discussing books before you finish them? Do you feel that as readers we have the right to do that? So The Accidental put me into a pretty bad slump, and I started watching a lot of TV. I finished the new season of Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt, which didn't disappoint, and Orange is the New Black, which I think actually just had its best season yet. I finished A Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, and then to try and break myself out of this 
horrific reading slump, I started listening to a series of unfortunate events on audiobook, and then immediately afterwards watching the corresponding Netflix episodes. So, of course, this is around the time that I came up with the idea for a new series on my channel all about book-to-TV adaptations. I'll link the announcement video somewhere for you guys to check out if you missed it. I'm really looking forward to putting those videos together, but I cannot decide which book or show, book slash show, I should start with. There's Anne of Green Gables, I was considering that one, um, maybe a series of unfortunate events, maybe A Handmaid's Tale. Um, if you have advice, let me know, but once I decide, I'll actually film it. But yes, I listened to the first three books in a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket, aka Daniel Handler, or maybe it's Daniel Handler, aka Lemony Snicket. Anyway, those books are The Bad Beginning, The Reptile Room, and The Wide Window. You likely know the premise of these books already, but just in case you don't, the three Baudelaire children lose their parents and home to a devastating fire, becoming the three Baudelaire orphans. They experience a tremendous amount of bad luck and misery as they come up against an evil man out to get their fortune and become suspicious of the circumstances surrounding their parents' deaths. These books were just as I remembered them when I was younger. The narrator has a unique voice. It's morose and there's this pervading idea that the children in the books are smarter than the adults give them credit for. I never actually finished the series when I was younger. I found the books to be kind of formulaic and repetitive over time, and I think I stopped around book 9 or 10 because I had to wait a while for the next book to come out, and then I just kind of lost interest. I'm really hoping to complete the whole series this time though. I'm eager to compare the books to the TV show adaptation as well. Then I started Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind as a buddy read with Jasmine from Novel Thoughts. I'm pretty far along actually. I'm on page 171 out of 263 and I'm absolutely loving it. It is such a dark and twisted look at the power of smell and what it means to be human. So I will discuss it more with you when I'm finished with it, which will actually probably be soon, but I probably won't talk about it until my July wrap up, unless I decide to do a review of it, which I might be so inclined to do. We'll see. Also coming up next month is a buddy read that I'm oh so eager for. I'll be reading Homegoing with Mary from Happily Ever Esh and Justina. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I will link their channels below so you can check them out. But I'm super excited for that and I hope that Homegoing lives up to its hype. Also this July I'll be starting my residency so I'll be working full time again. I really hope that my channel won't suffer from this, and I'll try and upload a video approximately once a week, which I usually do. I don't know if you've realized it, but I don't have a specific day or time that I upload. Putting that kind of restriction on myself might make this stressful for me, so I think an approximate once a week timeline works well. I hope it does for you too. So I'd love to know, how was your month? What was your favorite book that you've read this month? Do you have any opinions on discussing books before you finish them? And how do you feel about being disappointed by critically acclaimed books? I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I've mentioned in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye!